Exposing the Data and Cache Service with Hyper. Hello, my name is Tom Wilson, and today I'm going to show you how you might go about using the cache service and the data service for Hyper in your application. One of the most powerful features of Hyper is the ability to compose your services because it's one API and it's backed with promises. Um, you can compose those services to, uh, you know, make it just very easy in your business logic to do multiple things. So with that said, what we're going to do is start a Node.js project from scratch. We're going to configure HyperConnect, and then we're going to um, create a, uh, a manual kind of composition between the data service and the cache service um, so that you can see how um, leveraging caches can make your application faster and more performant. So first thing we're going to do is sign in. to GitHub, and then we're gonna just create a new repo. Um, we'll just call it you know, Hyper Connect Playground, because that's a really cool name. And we'll make it public so you can review it. And then uh, we're gonna use Gitpod. So we have the Gitpod extension installed where you can um, essentially click a button in GitHub and it'll open up a VS Studio virtual machine for you in Gitpod, which is really cool. Or you could, you know, open your terminal and, um, you know, pull down the, clone down the repository and literally start in the same space. Um, hopefully uh, this won't take too long, but while that's uh, working, we can go and if you haven't already created a Hyper account, you can go to dashboard.hyper.io or we could go to hyper.io and click dashboard up here. And to create a free developer account, all you do, I'll go ahead and just sign out. All, all you do is click the GitHub and then um, if you haven't signed in before, it'll take you through a GitHub authorization. Um, and then you authorize Hyper to validate your GitHub account. And actually don't um, do anything, but just validate that, that you are a real user. And then you come in here to uh, the developer preview and we'll add an application and in this application, we want both data and cache. So we'll, we'll create that. Cool. Got that. Now let's go over to our playground. Um, sometimes this happens. I can just hit refresh and it usually just pops me right into the IDE. There we go. Um, okay. So we're in Visual Studio Code and um, we're going to create um, or set up a node app. So we'll go yarn init and I'll do dash Y. So I don't have any comment blocks, but you can, um, if you like questions, you can just hit yarn init and answer the questions as you see fit. And then we're going to um, add a couple of things. We're going to add yarn add, and let me just bump up the font so you can see what I'm doing. Now it's kind of annoying when you're watching a video and you can't read the text. And maybe that's just me because I'm old. But um, anyway, hopefully you can see that better now. And we'll do add hyper dash connect. And we'll go ahead and add node dash fetch. And I think that's it for now. And then we'll do yarn add and we'll do dash D dot emv 
So dot env will just make it easier to manage our environment variables. And we'll go ahead and create a dot env file. And we'll create a register dot cjs file. And we'll create a index dot js file. Okay. And you can do that on the editor as well. Um, but um, touch when you're in the command line is an easy and cool command to use. Um, so the first thing we want to do is set up our hyper environment variable. In the .env file, we'll type hyper, and then we'll go to our dashboard and open up our app. And it's going to give us the key secret connection string. We want the connection string, so we're going to copy that, and we're going to paste that in our environment variable like that. So pretty cool. Um, that's cool. And now we need to do something that hopefully we can make better in the future. But and I don't want to go into a long story, but like if you use the browser, fetch is built in. If you use Dino, fetch is built in. If you use Cloudflare workers, fetch is built in. There's lots of JavaScript server runtimes where fetch is built in. Node.js fetch is not built in and Node.js has been around for a while and they're constantly improving it but um, it currently uh, supports ES modules uh, which is fairly new um, but it has a, a library called node fetch that we installed that provides fetch ca compatibility the only problem is is you have to import it HyperConnect is, is built on the latest technology and not on common JS. It's built on um, uh, ES modules. So, and it's also built to run in multiple environments. So it's looking for a global fetch and a global request object of fetch. So um, the way we're gonna manage that is use this register cjs file so we're gonna um in the register gs cs cjs file we're gonna um, create a function called register and in that function we're gonna do a dynamic import of node fetch so we'll do await import node fetch and then we're gonna set the global this for fetch equals node fetch default, right? And then we're gonna set the global this for request equals node fetch dot request. And re requ request is the global kind of class for request objects and then response is the global class for response objects. So we'll, we're not going to use it, but we're going to set it because that's how other environments have it. Response. There we go. And then we're just going to call register down here. And the way that we're going to use this module is we're going to use it on the, um, on the command line. So we'll run the require. Um, same thing with our .env module so that it can be loaded into the environment before our app runs. So we need to go to package JSON and add a script, scripts, let's call it dev. And in this we'll say node-r.envconfig-r register cjs. And then we'll call our index.js file. And what this will do is it will register our register the fetch module inside of our application so that fetch will be available globally. And I'll show you how that works by um, opening index.js.
Reverend? I think my dog is wanting to be on video. Shh. You want to go outside? Hmm? Are you going to let me finish? Okay. All right. Sorry about that. Okay, so what we want to do is show that um, fetch is available globally. So we'll just do console.log fetch, right? Right there. And if we do yarn dev, we should get fetch is defined. Oh. So one more point is we have to make our module, we have to change our package JSON to change the module or the, the type of project to be module for ES6 modules. Now, let's see. We've got our .env. We've got register. Um, wait, import from this. Um, okay. So I think it does get loaded. It may just not get loaded immediately. Let's um, let's try to get HyperConnect to work. That'll be a good point to check. So we'll say import connect from HyperConnect. And then we'll um, instantiate Hyper by getting the node, the Hyper, environment variable and then empty um, parentheses you got to do that that's kind of the the namespace or we could do default and just empty parentheses just is default right so with that let's um let's see if we can't add some data so we'll go await hyper.add hyper.data add and we're going to add a document so id game dash one equals type game and name donkey pong right Okay, and then let's log the result. Let's see if everything works. Cool, everything works. So we loaded that and it registered the um, fetch and everything works just fine. Sweet. Okay, so we've got everything set up. And just to make things a little bit easier, I'm going to create an async function called main. And then we'll just call main there. Even though you can see it supported um, uh, top, top await, right? So you can call await without having to wrap it in a sync. But what we're going to do is we're just going to create some um, pure functions up here and then this will be our kind of um, uh, you know, call stack kind of thing okay so what we want to do is let's go ahead and um, remove the document that we just added and then um, uh, hang on, lost my place. Let's remove the document that we just added. So let's do await hyper dot data dot remove, and we'll give it an ID of 
game one. And if we run, cool. So now we should have nothing in our data store, nothing in our cache. Um, so what we want to do is every time we add a document, we want to also cache it. Okay. So, and then every time we read a document, we want to read from the cache. And then when we delete a document, we want to also delete it from the cache. So this way, we'll basically, every time we write a document, we'll write it to our database, but we'll also write it to the cache. And then when we read it, we're gonna read it from the cache if it exists. If not, we'll fall back and read from data. And then when we delete it, we'll remove it from the cache um, and then um, remove it from the database and the cache. And then this way, what we'll create is um, this workflow that will leverage high read throughput on the cache instead of having to hit our database every time for a read. Um, so that's what we're going to do. But let's um, first maybe uh, get familiar with kind of the cache API um, because it is fairly new. And let's see. So the cache API is uh, very simple um, and, you know, it's meant to be simple. It's meant to be composable. So it'll look very similar to the data API, but it's actually going to a temporary cache. Um, so if we wanted to cache a document, we would do um, result equals await hyper.cache.add and we'll give the uh, document a key. So we'll say name one and then a value and we'll say ID game one type game name Donkey Kong. Cool. Now we could also give it what's called a time to lit live live. Time to live to live. TS. We could say one minute, one second, one day, one hour, etc. And that could be two hours, could be five hours, five days, five seconds, whatever. Um, but we're going to say no TTL, which means to store it until we delete it. Um, and then we'll just do a console.log result. And if I run that, get OK true. So able to add to the cache. Now to read from the cache, it's as simple as calling a get command. So we'll say document equals await hyper.cache.get, and we just give it our ID. And we should be able to say console.log doc. And let's run that. And let's see, what did we do? Oh. Game one, that would be helpful. Cool. And we got game one from our cache. Sweet. Okay. And if we want to remove the document, we just call cache remove. But before we, we do that, let's just do query. And query is a pattern matching. So if I wanted to find all of the keys that start with the text game, G-A-M-E, I can just add an asterisk and then it should return me um, a response or a result that contains a list of documents um, that all match that pattern, right? So it's kind of a pattern matching query. So let's give that a whirl. Cool. So it returned us all the keys, which there's only one that match that. And you can, you know, 
um, say ends with one, so star dash one, and it would return all the um, keys that end with dash one, or you could do contains. So that would say starts with game and ends with one. Um, so that's about all you can do with caches. Mainly, they're not meant to be like this aggregate query engine. It's really to, to store uh, data to be read very quickly. So get and set. And then that, that's the last one. Let's do set real quick. Um, set, we give it a key and then we give it a new value. And then um, that value, I'll just copy this and with that uh, value, you can modify it, right? So, so we could say, let's just enhance it. Published 1982 or 81, whatever. So we run that, get okay true. And then if we do a get, We should now have published as part of our document. Cool. So add, get, set, remove, and query. That is the cache API. Super simple. So here we'll remove, okay, true, and now we can get back to our challenge. So, like I said, what what I said before is because the APIs are all promise based and they're very similar, it becomes pretty easy to compose these. And um, what I like to do um, in this screencast is compose, uh, show you a way to compose these uh, just using plain old promises. Um, so what we have is we need to add um, and, and when we add, it's kind of like a cache add. So we want to add to our data service and our cache service. And then we need to do a get with a fallback, right? So with our get, we want to fall back to data if not in cache. And then we want a delete where we remove um, data in cache if it exists and then and then remove data in um, data. <laughs> remove the doc in data if it exists. So we basically want to remove them all. Um, we don't want something to be in the cache when it's not in the database, right? Because then when we read it, it'll read from the cache like it's still in the database, but it's not. Yeah. So we got to handle all three of those cases. Um, and we'll just use some pure helpers. That'll help us really quick. We'll add um, these nice pure functions, log, it's not really a pure function, but it's a shortcut. So that'll just tell us what's going on. And then always, we'll always return whatever value, no matter what's called in the value before. And then constant is kind of identity. So whatever you pass in, it's going to pass. And that'll just help us with our promise management, make things a little bit easier. Um, and then what we're going to do is uh, work on cache add. So cache add, we need to add to the database. And if that's success, successful, we want to cache it. Um, so we're going to create a little helper function that will take the document and then it's just going to call hyper.data.add document. 
And so what will return from hyper is if that's successful, it'll return an okay true. Um, and if it's not successful, it'll return an okay false. So, or it will um, throw an error. So we'll do a then, and then we're gonna say always return the doc, right? And maybe what we want to do is get the result and say, Result dot okay. Return the document, right? Or we might want to promise dot reject so that it doesn't uh, try to cache anything, right? Because if it's false, then um, then then. Uh, We'll just return the response, promise.reject response, right? Um, but the key is, is if it's successful, we want to return this document. And if it's not successful, then we'll just reject it so it won't get caught in our promise chain. Um, so that's cool. That gives us our add. And now we want to create a cache function which will take a doc and then it'll call hyper.cache.add with the doc. And we need to give it a key. So doc.id and value like that. Um, we want to give it a key because you could have a different type of key than what your ID is. So we want to always give it a explicit key. And then, um, if it's successful or not, we're gonna just um, use always doc, right? Cool. So now let's create our um, cache add function. And, and the cache add is gonna take a document and then we're gonna use um, promise.resolve to start our chain. So if you, uh, I think it'll look a little bit better, um, but we'll, we're starting a promise pipeline, which means we're going to take the document and we're gonna pass it into the add function. And whatever the result of that function is, we're gonna pass it into the cache function. And then whatever the result of that is, we'll pass it back to the caller. And in this case, we'll pass the document that we added. So um, we're going to do dot then, and we'll call um, add, and then dot then cache, right? So we take the document, and we pass it into add, where once it's successful, it's going to return the document, and it's going to pass it to cache, and then cache is going to cache it, return the document, and then return it back to the caller. So now in our main function um, to add game one, we just we go ahead and wrap it in log, but we're gonna call it cache add, right? And we're just gonna give it a doc. So we're gonna say ID game one type game and name Donkey Kong. Okay. And now we should be able to run that and we should get a oh, promise pending. So I forgot the await, oh right? Now let's do an, another one. Let's do game two and we'll call that Super Mario Brothers. And now let's run that with the await. Cool, so we got game two. So hopefully now we've got two games in our system that are in the database and they're also in the cache. So let's verify that. Let's comment this out. And then let's just do log await hyper dot data dot get 
game one. And then let's do another log. Await hyper dot cash dot get game two. Right? And we'll switch these later. Let's just check that out. Cool. So game one is in data in the database and game two is in the cache. So let's just flip those and see if game two is in the cache and game one is in the database. And they are. Cool. Now, um, we, we've got our add. So anytime we want to add a document, we can just call cache add, and it's going to add it and cache it at the same time. Pretty sweet. But now we want to do a get where we actually read the cache, and then if it's not in the cache, we'll, um, we'll read it from data. So in, in order to do that, let me change this. It's driving me crazy. Music two. There we go. <laughs> um, in in order to do that, what we need to do is to test it. Let's create a document in just the data, and we'll say ID game three uh, type game and name um, Mario Paint, something like that. Cool. So let's run that. So now we've got game one and game two in our cache and data and game three just in our data. So now we can have some uh, functions to call to test this implementation. So the first thing we want to do is create some helper functions. Um, so we want to create a function called is cached. Is cached. And it's going to take an ID and then it's going to call hyper.cache.get ID. And then it's going to just do a check on the result because if the um, document is there, it's going to return the entire document. Otherwise, it will return false. It'll return OK false. So we'll take the result and we'll do a, a check and say is result.ok equal to false. And if it is, then we're going to do a promise.reject ID. And I'll explain why I'm doing that in a minute. Otherwise, we're just going to return the, the result, which would be the document, right? Um, so that way, if it's cached and we just get the document, but if it's not, that doesn't exist, it's going to return OK false. So we want to reject the promise, and that's going to push the ID on the right side of the promise chain. And we'll show you how that will work in a minute. But let's create one more helper function. We'll call it read. And what read will do is take an ID and it's just going to call hyper.data.getID, which it will either return it or it'll return OK false. Um, OK. So now in our get, we're going to um call this just get that's a good name for it Cons get and it'll take an id and then what we're going to want to do is we'll start our chain with promise resolve with the id and then we're going to say is it cached and if it is then we're going to just return the constant we're going to return whatever value it is and then in a promise, this uh, on rejected method is where we'll handle our read. So if for whatever reason it's um, not there, we're going to get the ID and read it. 
And then the, the last thing we need to do is kind of catch this because if there's an error, it's going to go in there and it's going to read it and blow up. So what we want to do is like catch and then uh, whatever that error is, that's okay. We'll return the ID. Okay. So if the cache doesn't exist for whatever reason, then we'll just return the ID and that should be good. So now with our git, we should be able to um, have a single git that's going to return from our cache if it exists or return from data if it doesn't. So we'll do log um, await git game one. That should return from our cache log await git game two. Again, should return from our cache and log get game three. Now this one should fall back and return just from the data. So let's see how that works. Okay. So we got game three, but we got the ID. So our read didn't work. So we've Oh, no, this catch came in here. So I'll have to remove that and move, move that down here, right? That's what I have to do. Okay. I think that's right. Cool. So that's the get, right? So that, that will get our data from the cache. And then the next thing we need to do is delete. So it'll get it from the cache or not. So um, we can just, well, well, I, I can prove to you, okay, game three, is coming from data. So let's do time yarn dev. Okay. It's 1.1. And then let's do game one. And it's 0 0.8. So, so you see the difference in speed. Now, uh, don't freak out a read that in the in production it won't take a second to read it. Um, that's just because we're uh, local and we're having to run the entire node application. So it's the entire life of everything starting up and starting down. So it's not the exact time, but you can see the difference in, in retrieval from the cache in the, the database. But don't worry about the exact time. <laughs> that's, not, um, that's not close. Um, okay, so Delete. Delete's pretty simple. Uh, we'll create a delete function and it'll take an ID and um, we'll do our, um, we'll actually just uh, call a function called decache with that ID. So we want to decache it um, and delete it at the same time. So let's take a look at what that will look like and it's gonna look a little weird but it works that's the cache takes the id and we'll call hyper.cache.remove id so if the id exists that's fine so then we'll say always id to pass it down the chain if it doesn't exist we want to use always id2 um, to pass the id down the chain then we'll say hyper.data.remove and then that will remove it from the database um, so in, in order to call that we will say log await d E L game one log away D E L game two and log away 
B E L game three. Now the first two is going to remove from the cache and the data. And then the third one is going to remove just from the data because it's not in the cache. So if we run that, cool. Now we can verify that by doing a get. get and get okay i'll get rid of this time thing because it's annoying oops cool so they all um are gone from the cache and the data so that that is you know an example of basically composing data and cache. And what we hope to do in the near future is to create these plugins where you can just say, you know, I want to use this pattern. And then um, every time for a given document type, you can just use this pattern and it'll always cache it. Um, and um, yeah, that's it. I'll save this. Um, let's do touch dot get ignore and then echo the modules dot get ignore and then echo dot emv dot get ignore. Okay. Oops. Cool. All right, let's add all of these. Let's just check out a branch. We'll call it a cache example. And we'll commit these to the cache example branch. Like that. Okay. So with that, um, that's the code you can kind of check out. And um, now you've kind of seeing how hyper data and hyper cash work together. Hopefully that was helpful. Thanks.